Okay, we're underway here. Just gonna, I've got a couple of screens here, so if I'm looking away from you, it's not ignoring you. I'm just looking at my other screen, which has the other control things for controlling the, the webinar. Okay, so let me share the screen and we'll get underway. Hello, uh, William. Welcome, William. Uh, and sharing screen. Okay, so the webcams have gone to the right. So if you want to click on the three by three little matrix at the top, you can reshape them to as whatever size you want. So you can see connect with everybody. I tend to make them bigger so you can see you all. Okay, so. All right, just moving a couple of windows around. All right, get underway. I think, I think everyone's here for now. So, I'm Nicholas David Nan of the Centre for Conscious Ascension. This is especially for guys who are going to watch on YouTube later. Um, welcome to How to Help Others Transmit Their Karma to the Gifts of Service with the Cell Contract Reading Training. So, we'll just go through the but we have at the beginning, then we'll get into finding out why you guys are here. Have you noticed how people turn away from the biggest karmic challenges they face in their lives? I did that for most of my life. Because the ego is very pain averse. And no matter how hard they've tried, as they just can't, it's just too painful for them to face them, as they lack the spiritual map of life to overcome them. This webinar is about how you can help others um, break through those tough karmic patterns by identifying the core karmic patterns and most importantly how to go about transmuting them so they can deliver their gift of service to the world which we all have as light workers a special thing they've been looking for for their entire life i spent most of my life looking for this and um no one could tell me what that was i went to school i went to university and work in the normal sense in the corporate world and no one could answer the really important questions. They were just doing what they were being programmed to do. So I had, um, I felt something was not right with the world. Someone wasn't telling me the truth of what was going on. So that's, that was the beginning of my journey for this work. Um, and I had a um, soul contract reading with Frank Alpa, the founder of this work. 1919 Arizona at a workshop he was running and he explained my entire life to me by looking at my chart and, and then I found out what my gift of service was so it's now 30 years later and I'm delivering it and if without that reading that profound shift I wouldn't be here as he talked about what I'm doing now so that's why I'm here to sort of share the power of this very amazing work with you guys I have to find out why you guys are here so um because then that can help us shape the webinar to whatever you need. Because we do it a little differently each time. So, yeah, I'd like to hear from each of you if you're willing to, or just leave it on the chat for the guys, not on on screen. Um, then that sort of gives it sort of gives group intention really. So if you just let us know where you are, what brought you here, and what you need from this, and then I'll do my best to meet that need. Yes. Okay, so some of you may read the book or watch Gaia or just curious, you may just see, see it on Facebook. So we're interested to hear from you. So who would like to go first? Just wave at me. Say, okay, Eddie. Um, well, it's interesting because I wasn't actually sure what I was doing this afternoon. Um, I actually listened to um, a summit that was, um, what's the word, managed by Helena Riley. Yep. And I've always been fascinated by this area of what we, what we might call esoteric teachings or ascended masters, whatever. And I have worked um, with shamans, shamans, how you pronounce it, in different parts of the world. But um, it's, it's strange because I was told that I had a, a certain number of gifts. And I sort of always knew from a very small child that I was a very deep empath. Yep. So I think the, the issue is now sort of resolving once and for all, you know, what is really happening and we actually, how we transcend the suffering, not just for individuals, but, you know, on a, on a planetary, planetary scale as well. So, so that's really why I'm here. Okay. Sounds like a grand vision, Eddie. Thank you. 
That's it, yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming along, William, showing yourself. Appreciate that. Love your background. So, yeah. So who's so next then? <laughs> yeah, you want to go next? I'll introduce you now. So, thank you. Yes, I, I along my path, um, my karmic path, I realized that it's it's all attached to everyone else's, and although I cannot solve their karma for them I, I would definitely like to find out ways i can help alleviate or accelerate their path as well okay thank you and where are you texas texas US. Nice name. happy yeah. thanksgiving everyone <laughs> yeah thanksgiving <laughs> yeah okay all right okay hi Karen? hi yeah um my name's Karen, and I'm in uh, the United States. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I stumbled, you know, I had a rough time in life not understanding why I'm here. Very, you know, very depressed, not feeling like I belonged on this planet. And... Um, so then I, about 59 years old, I came to a point where, you know, I just said, I have to figure out what's going on or, you know, I have to get off this planet. I can't do another 10 or 20 years of this, you know. And uh, so I started, you know, looking into, um, you know, what was wrong with me. And I stumbled into spirituality and and I've just been stumbling through for the last four years. So uh, <laughs> I stumble here, I stumble there. <laughs> and uh, I'm still kind of, uh, I've done a lot of healing. I still um, you know, don't feel like I, uh, I know I have, I know I have a connection to spirit, but I don't, uh, no, I'm very empathic, um, and I feel a lot, you know, energy-wise, but I don't know how to translate it, and I don't know how to translate anything about what happens to me energetically. Um, so I, I still feel like I, I have a lot to learn, and I'm kind of looking to stumble into the thing that will help me to uh sort of figure it all out well you're in the right place karen so this is all Good. about figuring out the structure of truth of your own life and of helping others find the same thing so they're no longer lost which is most people say lost their entire life come back and do it again same themes so it's about making a lot more progress and growing in consciousness so okay who wants to go next? We've got, and if you want to, it's Kira and um, we have Ashley. If you want to, you're brave enough to show yourself. Do you want to share, Ashley? Or... Good morning or good afternoon, good evening. Um, I'm from California, so West Coast, celebrating Thanksgiving today. Um, I can resonate with a little bit of everyone, um, you know, everyone's sentiments. Um, I think I've been on a path of seeking my whole life. I remember when I was just a little girl, I would just look at the sky. I don't know why I keep on looking at the sky, but there was something in me that I knew I didn't belong here. And I had to the a loneliness and the longing to fit in and, and to know more. And um, I started getting into spirituality as a teenager, first starting with Buddhism and, you know, the occult and astrology and all that. And um, I found this last year, and I find it to be very fascinating. Um, and I uh, would like to learn more about it so I can help others and help myself and continue to grow and evolve. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Kira, do you want to share why you're here? And sure. Sure. Yes. Um, okay. So I started my... I've, I mean, spiritual stuff has I've, it's been a part of me my whole life. I was completely unaware of everything as a child because I only had TV to kind of show me bits and pieces. So I knew there was something more, but I just 
kind of was uneducated, was super fascinated. And then the last, the three, last three years, I went through a pretty deep transformation and awakening where I came into my gifts um, at 17. I was told that I was a very powerful and gifted healer and psychic, but I wasn't like, at that time, I wasn't really ready nor prepared for any of it. And I was suffering a lot physically because like I was so uneducated in my gifts that I physically was taking on so many of other people's problems it affected me deeply and I never thought when they, when I was told that I'd be a healer I never thought ever that I that I would do it I mean I didn't think it would be something I thought I was just going to kind of just be like a regular person working a regular job and living life um but yeah I quit my job as a mechanic and I basically started a business and I've been healing people energetically so what's drawn me to this this kind of came up out of nowhere I was scrolling TikTok and there was this one lady I think she's her, I don't know how to pronounce her last I don't know how to pronounce her name but she was on TikTok and she talked about the map of conscious or sorry not the map of consciousness the um about finding your life purpose and that map that you that you have basically and I was super fascinated so I followed her and I went into every single video of hers and I was like reading as much as I could and then I found the book and then I started reading in the book and I was even more fascinated so anyways um I am all about helping people transform and to be better to become who they're meant to be and while that was a hard journey for me to kind of discover that I want to help other people discover that as well and this is kind of um, you know, it's kind of helped me do that actually. Well, a little, little bit, I guess, in a way, like the more, the more I know, the better I can help my clients. And I'm just super fascinated about learning new, new things. That's kind of the goal in the end is like, how can I become better at what I do so I can help more people? And this seems to be a very, um, like, you know, the center of ascension just seems like very powerful to me like extremely powerful. I, this is probably the first time I've ever really joined webinars. I've, well, I joined the last one that you had shared, but prior to that, I've never joined them. I've never taken part. And so this is my first time ever really kind of just expanding my own knowledge as outside of books anyways, expanding my knowledge with other people like, and like-minded people, I should say. So it's super, I'm just excited to be here and happy to be here with everybody. <laughs> Yeah, we're happy to have you. So, was was the name um, Geliana Arkin? Yes, yes, yeah, her. She, she, she's um, I know her very well. She's one of our practitioners in this work. Yeah, yeah. I think her TikTok videos are very good. So. Yeah, yeah. No, she does a very good job at um, talking about it and explaining it and kind of getting a lot of people engaged in what what the whole purpose of it. Like, I wouldn't have understood any of it. You know, her videos helped me a lot. So. Okay, Thank you. okay, thanks for sharing. All right. Okay, just make sure no one else has come. Okay, we'll get into it now. All right. So I'm gonna share the screen and we'll talk about it more. So we know why you we're here. Oh I'll say yeah, why am I here also? Um more specifically. Um my mission is to help you guys get on with your mission. As light workers. I wrote the book, Your Soul Country Decoded, because that was the book I would have liked to have had when I woke up spiritually in my early 20s to tell me how does it work here because no one else could tell me. So it's like the light workers guide to actually how you function through your contract, how you actually get on with your mission. That's the purpose of the book. And so I spend most of my time training practitioners in this work and in divine healing and light body integration to actually get out there and help people manifest their, their missions of service the light workers manifest their missions of service that's my that's why i'm here so grateful you guys have turned out to find out a bit more okay so when i wrote the book all sorts of interesting ideas came through me um, i just got guidance this was about uh, 2011 i started writing the book I had guidance that was, I'd been doing this work for since 1990. 
So I've been doing it a very long time, 21 years in spirit. Just said, it's time to write the book. I said, okay, how do we do that? Never written a book before. And they just guided me, uh, found me the, gave me the structure, and helped me re- meet the right people, um, publishers and marketing people. And it all sort of just happened. It was like I was a channel for um, helping people discover that the karma contains the spiritual gift of service. So the biggest challenges we face in our life, creative now soul contract, contain our greatest gifts, which is the last place you'd look for something. Most of us turn away from that stuff because it's just too painful. Um, because the law of opposites is an action here, the one they didn't tell us about. Most of you probably heard of the law of attraction and the book The Secret and the movie and stuff like that. Well, what happens initially in life is you get the opposite of what you're to become. You may have disempowerment, you may feel unworthy, you may not trust. If you have those sort of things, you need to learn to trust, learn to become empowered. Okay. So everything that has really challenged you, made life really, really difficult at times, um, that karmic pattern is only there as a lesson. It's there for you to turn into it, to feel your way through the layers of it. And as you transmute it through self-healing or seeing someone else or whatever techniques you resonate with, it gradually, lay by lay, turns into your gift of service. Like my primary karmic pattern is a, is a massive disempowerment. So I had a really, really tough childhood. But it, it's taken many years, but gradually overcoming it has led to me becoming empowered to then to empower others. But unless I've gone from the journey of this very negative experience, which that's what I never get out of, to this positive experience, then I couldn't help others because my soul wanted to experience being a complete victim of life, step by step, becoming empowered and taking charge of my life. So this is the journey we all go on with, this, with the, our specific coming patterns and there are 22 of them in the system. Um, and so that, that's the reason people come to this work because they want to find out, well, what is it, this karmic thing, and what do I do about it? And so the, this work says not only what it is, but it gives, it gives the right tools to actually overcome it, which is what people really want, so they can move out of the pain they're in. Because pain and stress drive us to actually make change within ourselves. So how do we help people? Well. You have the answer to that search if you're interested in this work. If you're interested in learning how to become a soul contract reader, basically what it does is it gives you this really powerful tool to decode the secrets of the blueprint of life for spiritual seekers, because there's millions of us. But only so many come online. God sends millions of us to wake up humanity. And your job, is, if you're interested in this work, is to wake up people by to find out their true purpose in life, their soul destiny by taking the hidden sounds, the hidden meaning within their birth name, which creates a reality each moment and explaining it to them. And the soul contract produces the spiritual map of life. So they can overcome their karma, which is the main reason they want to find out about how this, what this work is about. Some, some of you are coming for this reason. You, you, you just said to me, how um, to express more of their talents, how to achieve goals, and most importantly, if you work through all the stuff here, how to manifest your soul life purpose, how to reach fulfillment, because most people end their lives with unfulfilled dreams because they never got to this because they got stuck down here. And the stuff didn't get, didn't take off. And um, our job is, if, with this work is to help them fulfill their dreams and fulfill your own dreams, actually. Things you can never imagine. For example, I spent... Um, I left the corporate world 25 years ago. I had no idea how to run a run a spiritual business. So um, I, it was very challenging, barely paying the bills for a very long time until I gradually worked through my, worked through, um, my issues, my karma, put my talents online, my goals started happening. And I, I cleared enough of these and then magic started to happen. Um, from the time the book was published, nine years ago, nine, eight years ago, that's when life changed because I was delivering my gift of service, which was this knowledge and empowerment through the book. 
So things changed and things started gradually getting a lot better. So, hang on, I'm gonna jump the slide. Okay, so I'm gonna run through how this works because some people watching this won't know that much about it. So we'll sort of, start, so if you guys who have read the book, just bear with me here. So how do we work out what is the soul contract? What is the spiritual map of someone's life? Well, we use the symbol of the Star of David, which is like a gateway of consciousness. When we come to the earth plane, you come through this gateway of consciousness and it creates your, it creates your ego personality in a very specific way as a filter for you to, your soul to experience the reality. So we have two triangles. We have a physical triangle. We have a spiritual triangle here. And the physical triangle is about the creation of our personality and our interface with the outer world. Like we're in our, our physical bodies, our earth suits, I call them, and we're interacting with the world. And we have an ego construct energetically around us that is our filter. And so the physical one is how we interact with the world, and the spiritual one is how we eventually bring in higher consciousness to deliver through to deliver through the physical triangle is our foundation, our gift of service. And these triangles, uh, the big triangles have three aspects. They have karma, talents, and goals. So as I said, the karma is the unresolved past life issues that come through, that create a negative context, all the tough stuff for our talents, if they're a good fit to overcome them, and they become our gift. As the talents get strong, physical talents get stronger, it helps us move to the physical goals. The thing that gets us out of bed in the morning. Mine are eights in the system, so I love connecting with people. That's why I love doing these webinars. Okay. And then in the spiritual side of the chart, you have spiritual karma. This is, this is our suppressed spiritual gifts. And if the talents are well matched to overcome them, that brings our true gifts out to the world. As they get stronger, that moves us to the spiritual goals. And if you consciously work on all of these six outer aspects around here, what happens is it starts to manifest the soul destiny. It starts to manifest. And that's the thing that creates a very fulfilling life. So this knowledge helps people reach this if they do enough work. It takes time and dedication and focus, but it can be done. So the soul contract is that the sounds of Hebrew, we use 22 sounds of Hebrew to match the sound of a birth name. And those are the sounds of God creating creation or great spirit, this is God in the spiritual sense. So basically we're matching those frequencies of God to the name and those vibrations each have a specific meaning and they, they create a specific reality in your life once they're programmed into your name. So it's programmed into your DNA, into your energy bodies and your physical body. So you're literally radiating out this program your whole life. And the matrix around you, it's like a big 3D projection screen that's rearranging around that to create your life experience. So if you understand what is in the soul contract, then you can change the programming in it gradually to create a better life to actualize that subcontract to reality. So, okay. Karen, have you had a reading or done your chart? You have to unmute. No, I have not. I, I haven't read the book either. I just sort of ran into this site and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you that I really have a hard time, um, like, focusing and remembering. And so I'll get, I'll think I'm going to do something, and then I'll get distracted and, and it'll be gone. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, like, I, I ran across this site, I don't know how long ago, maybe three months, four months ago. And, um, and I, I had, a, I went to a, I, I participated in another seminar or webinar of yours and uh but you know I have a hard time um I'm scattered that's I'm I'm unfocused I'm undirected I'm scattered and um 
confused and lost. You you could just throw those in. <laughs> well, let's see if we can focus you and, and get you in, in the clear direction. Okay, so we have Yanaki or Janaki. If you want to participate in the conversation, just say yes to the become become a panelist and switch your video on. If you feel like it, otherwise, just you can just listen with the video off, or you can chat to me. So, do you want to find out what you're here to really do, Karen? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you happy to? We're going to do your chart now. Do a brief little hasty reading of your, your contract. So it shows sure. you how it works. Sure. All right. So let's do that. So. All right. So let's do this. So I'm going to put this is a sole con. This is sole. This is the software solecontractreader.com for um. It goes with the book for analyzing the uh, analyzing names. So now, do it, you analyze my maiden name or my married name? Uh, I need your maiden name. So, what's your birth name? My birth name is O'Connell. O apostrophe, capital C O N N E L L. Your middle name? Ann A N N. Okay. No E. No. Okay, we won't put your birth date in just so that you maintain your privacy. So are you happy for me to analyze this chart? Sorry, what part? Happy. Are you happy for me to analyze the chart? Analyze the chat. I'm not sure. No, no. Are you happy for me to actually do your sole contract? Just I need your consent to, so that you're actually okay for us to do this. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so the software requires us. Hang on. I'll put them. So you're okay with that. I can't, I can't see it. I can't read that. It's too small. Okay. Well, it'll be a bit bigger in a minute. I'm just entering this data here. Okay. Right. So let's go and chart here. We'll see, we'll see. It might be a little, um, see how, we'll see how big it turns out. Okay. All right. Can you see that chart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we've done, you guys, is that we have taken Karen's name, top, and the software has converted it to the equivalent Hebrew sounds here. And then within Hebrew, numbers and letters are the same thing. They have the same energy. So numbers are inherent within the Hebrew. But I'm not going to get into too much detail. Um, so this is a quick demo. So we're going to take these Hebrew numbers, here and we're going to allocate them around the star David, starting at physical karma. We just go around and around and around with them until we use them all up. And then what we do is we add them up. So in physical karma, the total is 47. So we go, we don't have a meaning for 47. We have 22 interpretations from the soul of Moses uh, for the first 22 numbers. In Hebrew. So we need to reduce it. So we go simply 4 plus 7 equals 11, which is this number here, the left hand number of the pair. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so we're even at 11, 2 here. All right. So that means that there's a frequency of an 11 and a frequency of a 2, plus every blend in between. So in this lifetime, Karen, you're here to experience the whole range of this 11 to. And in the case of, we all work out all the other numbers accordingly. And then what we do is that we take the physical numbers, place them on the top half of this table, spiritual numbers, place them on the bottom half. And then we get a total, we total up the two, two columns, we had an 87 and a 15. So eight plus seven, because it's greater than 22, becomes 15. One plus five becomes six, and that becomes a soul destiny sitting in the middle. This is why you're here. And all these channel symbols were channeled by Frank Alpa, and they all have a particular meaning. So Karen, is there one, what's the one major question you have about your life? What's the big question you have about your life? Uh, I believe I'm here to be a healer. Um, yeah. That's about, you know, 
you know, I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just stumbling. I'm just stumbling. That's all. Okay. What are you doing at the moment? Life, work-wise, where you, you live, and what are you? No, I, I am not. Here? I am not working, and uh, actually, I've never, I never found a. Um, so I had trouble working with people, um, and uh, I never found a career that I. I meshed with and so I I went around from job to job but primarily I just raised my children okay all right so in physical karma there's an 11 too so have you felt lost most of your life Karen yeah 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 the reason for that is because the 11 is all about learning structure in life it's about learning the structure especially in this case of how the physical world works so it's about taking learn to take ideas and concepts and to create a structure of your truth about how life works so i i i'm here to kind of like learn how this all works yeah you're here to learn how life works <laughs> okay this is why you feel lost because oh. that's the, that's the karmic lesson and to throw away the things that don't resonate you in the trash and just take the things that do resonate and build your own unique structure of truth and the two here, this little spring. So are you very emotionally sensitive, Karen? Uh, well, it, I did um, suppress it for the best part of my life. You know, until I was 59, I was taking antidepressants. Because um, I don't think I would have survived without them, to be honest. I either had to awaken early or I, you know, but... I was in too much pain to survive without without something to help me keep me here because it was um I was just in too much pain. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I you know, at fifty nine I I stopped taking the antidepressants and uh that was just four years ago and, and then I just started looking into finding ways to figure out what was wrong why i was in so much pain well this is an emotional spring which is why you got depressed so you're going up and down on the spring all the time did you have strong mood swings not as a rule but they're you know um my emotions are strong they're very, very yeah. strong you know? yeah well, this, is, this is emotionally going up and down all the time because you're on this energetic spring so this is learning to become emotionally resilient. And a lot of the reason why you've, you've run into depressions is because you've malabsorbed a lot of concepts and emotions from probably from the, probably from those around you, especially your parents and your ancestors. So yeah, I, I absorbed a lot of energy over my lifetime, not, un, not understanding or knowing that I was empathic. And um, yeah. so I, that's part of, you know, that pain that I was having as I was absorbing other people's emotions and feelings and not understanding it. Yeah, so you were processing all the emotional garbage. And that big load squashed your spring, which is why you got depressed. So the key to feeling better is to unload all the stuff that you've taken on inadvertently, especially when you were younger. Okay, so then you find your own structure of life underneath that. You find the real Karen. That's the key to this. Okay. But fortunately, you have this talent 11 too. So this is the lessons of it. And this talent 11, physical talent 11 too, is about having the structure of how things work and having emotional resiliency. And that feeds into this one. It's a perfect match. The positive expression is overcoming the negative expression here. Okay. No, so, I don't understand. What do you mean? So this, this means this gives you structure where this is lack structure. Okay. This gives you resiliency, whereas that needs resiliency. Okay. I think the main thing for you is to clean out the patterns in here to feel better. Um, I'll, I'll post a link for a process we could we have called clearing others' energies in the in the YouTube description. And then if you use that process, for each individual you've been imprinted by and each issue, you start to unload that unload that karmic 11 you start to feel better and then the spring will start to move more okay 
So moving on to physical goals, the 20 is great movement. So did you have a strong belief system imposed upon you as a child? Uh, could, it been, could it have been religious or spiritual or anything like that? Could that happen? Well, I, I was in a Catholic school, um, you know, that'll, that, that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. You know, we went to, when I, when I was, first started school, we went to church every day. Before every school. day. Yeah, that'll every definitely day. do it. So. Every day. Yeah. And it was, it was in Latin too. So not understanding it, it was all ritual, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, Catholicism is pretty classic for this. It's rigid, a rigid religious belief system, mostly Catholicism, it turns out. Um is imposed and your job is to break free from that imprint on all that all the um brainwashing and whatever else happened to you as a result of that to go and explore and have great movement to explore other things in life so how's that been going N not real well yeah no okay so it's about continuing to explore and breaking free of them and gradually clearing all those beliefs which part of you knows is not really you, is something else. Okay, so this is the explorer here. And the two is about have, developing resiliency to go and explore those in the world. Okay, so work in progress. And you have another one to here in spiritual karma. This is, this is definitely the Catholic one. But that's partly it. This is even stronger. This is the reason it's taken a while because you got two of them. It's unusual to have two. So yeah, so it's great you're on this webinar because this is exploring something completely different. So I'd say I'd, I'd encourage you to keep exploring new spiritual ideas and beliefs to find out what's true for you. Because you're seeking the structure of truth here for yourself. What really works for you in life? Well, I, I really haven't um, practiced Catholicism in a, in a long time. All I've been exploring all I've been exploring is really spiritual, but uh, you know the problem seems to be more with my physical body, um, not my my connection between my mind and my body. I think is not good. Yeah, well, it'll probably be from all this malabsorbed programming you've taken on because you're very sensitive. This is this is the empath here, so cleaning out the imprint is the key because your body is processing the stuff. Okay. So the spiritual talents of these 10 ones, which is a really um, lovely energy it's about, it's called potential manifestation. It's the movement of great spirit, balanced masculine and feminine aspect of God. This is in the spiritual sense, coming to the earth plane to serve. So you said you're interested in being a healer. So you're designed to serve with spiritual energies. That's the purpose and really connect to higher consciousness, Karen. And one is, the divine masculine aspect of God. This is Archangel Michael. You're here to disseminate healing specifically and knowledge. So you'd be probably quite good at healing because the energy is already built in. You've got a good connection here. It's about evolving that connection, especially this one, and allowing it to guide you in moving forward in life. Because there is a pathway for everybody to move forward if we can just connect to higher consciousness so that it comes through. It's not going to come from the ego mind. You're never going to figure it out. I used to be very left brain in the corporate world, and I came into this business and created this business. And I tried to apply those corporate analytical principles, and half the time things never worked. But when I sort of started to let go and trust spirit and did what feels right, then things started to work. So that was a big shift for me going from left to right brain. Um, very big shift. Okay, so. The reason you try it on all these different jobs is because in spiritual girls, you've got 15. So nothing's gone wrong in this life, Karen. It's just the way your contracts play out. It's what you do next that matters. And the 15 is all about inner circular movement. This is a gentle journey to find your right place in life. That's why you try these different jobs on, because you've been going around trying to find your right place, haven't you? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I... I... I, well, I didn't ever felt like I belonged here, period. So it kind of follows that I wouldn't, you know, 
find a job that I belong in. I didn't feel like I felt like I belong in my family even, you know, I yeah. just oh, never felt. Definitely huh? spiritual. Most light workers were all spiritually adopted. We look at our family thinking, how did that happen? Because they're oh. completely different. Well, families aren't there to love you. They're there to play your training ground to prepare you to understand how people work. Oh, yeah, well, so there you go. And we run at a high, see, light workers run at a much higher frequency and we wake up earlier. Whereas the majority, 98% of humanity is designed to go to sleep, to be as separate from spirit, God, as long as possible. And our job is to wake up early and help them awaken. Okay, that's why we don't feel like we fit in, because we, we don't. We're running at a much higher level of consciousness. And your job with this is to find the right place to be. And when you when you feel restless and insecure, you move on here. Yeah? But you'll find the right place to be. And I, I'd suggest being a healer is probably a good place to start, where you're not out in the, th in the 3D world trying to fit in with them. You're actually creating your own reality by helping others, creating a bubble of higher consciousness to affect the reality. You probably feel a lot more comfortable in a place like that. And the six is about, um, the six here is called the convertible knot. It's taking an idea that's resonant with you and turning it into a physical reality. And you said you were a bit scattered earlier. It's, it's because the ego is trying all sorts of ideas out to try and connect with the soul's creativity. The job is to feel in your heart which one opens it the most and focus on one thing at a time. Because all they may all seem equally important. Focus on one thing that opens your heart the most and then work out small manageable sets of success to get there and complete it. And each time you complete it and ignoring the distractions which will come from the ego, each time you complete it, you'll break through a bar the barrier to... Um, expressing the creativity in, of the soul. And next, and next time you do it, the next most important creative task will be easier. So have a little list for yourself, like for the day, what you're gonna do for, to carry out a task from A to B, if it's a complex one, and then cross it off as you go and ask yourself, am I on the next, my, my most important priority? And initially you may find, well, I'm not. You've drifted around the house or whatever, and doing other things. So you get back to your priority. So it's, it's through conscious action that you can change that. I've got one of these, so I know what it's like. It used to be very unfocused. And the soul destiny is the summary of it. You're here to feel your way back to great spirit, back to God. Find the one place that sits right for you in life. So overall, we're here to find the structure of life that works for you by cleaning out all the imprints, negative imprints, then you'll feel more balanced emotionally. You're here to build a structure of truth or something physical out in the world. You're here to break through the religious belief systems you've had here and here. You're here to embody God consciousness. Use it to serve others. Pure service is the key. I'd say as a healer, definitely, and to find your right place in the world, which is probably as a healer, Karen. How's that structure feel to you? Um, yeah, very possible. I, I don't feel like, you know, connected to any of it, but I mean, I don't even feel connected to being a healer. That's, um, we'll just sit with us and watch the video a few times because your 11 two needs to absorb a new structure. Watch it four yeah. or five times, this, this sort of reading. And gradually the pieces of the structure will fall into place. Okay. Okay. Because my guidance team said that we needed to do this for you today. Because they always pick someone. So you you were up today. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they're they they are they know they want me to to start doing something, you know. Yeah. Um and and I just can't um I can't I can't feel it. I can't I can't, I can't feel it. I can't picture it. And if I can't feel it or picture it, I don't know what to do and how to do it. You know, we'll just sit with this. It's 
So this is a transmission as well, okay? Watch the video again later once we send it out in a few days' time, and um, probably early next week at this rate, uh, and once it's processed. And then just let it sink in gradually, okay? Okay. Because you resonated with everything I talked about here. So, okay. All right, any questions, anyone on that? Um, just wanted to give a little demo because um, just everyone's on the same level and understanding how the system works. Put it in the chat, I'll bring the chat over here or just put your hand up. Any questions on that? Okay. So you really oh. don't... Go oh, on, I'm sorry. One, go on, Karen, then we'll have Eddie after you. Okay. So we don't... You don't really like. I don't really have connection with spirit, like um, you know, as, I guess as you would say, receiving messages. But this type of um, soul reading does not require that, correct? What to, to deliver a reading or? Yes. To, um, to... Well, you use your intuition, and, and you just got to practice doing it, and the gradually opens up because the frequencies of the work work with you. Mm. do this here yeah so an intuitive connection at least um doing what feels right is important at least the minimum of that mm -hmm. when we're on the training your channel opens up a lot with this whole thing okay all right okay eddie then we'll have william you can ask the question this is probably um not an easy thing to 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 even attempt to evaluate um my name that was given to me for example i've never liked it yeah ever i yeah. could never deal with it um so ironically what a lot of you've said to karen i think probably resonates with a lot of people um so is it really important to have these very precise if you like sounds these 22 sounds because i will admit that for me being very right brain as opposed to left brain Everything to do with like computers and charts actually doesn't make me feel very comfortable. So I'm just work, working out how you bring together the sort of the very sort of left brain sort of computer aspect of it with a sort of deep feeling of knowing that one is connected, if I'm making any sense. Um, it's very simple because it just, all we do is type the name in the computer as written in English, and then the computer does all the hard work, and then um it's about using the intuitive connection because you have a when you learn how to do this work you have a guidance team a soul contract guidance team will work through you mm -hmm. you're not doing it all by yourself you're the physical conduit for a whole team to help people awaken and this is where you use the right brain to feel it i mean i'm just feeling my way through karen's chart okay that's, that's what i'm doing i'm just feeling the energy and asking whatever comes through me in the moment okay so this very right brain heart-centered so the computer bits is, is the very shortest, but the most important bit is preparing the interpretations through feeling, because um, the book some of you have is a subset of the training manual for level one. We just took out some of the more controversial bits, which can't be released in the public domain. Mm -hmm. And basically you just feel through the manual, watch which interpretations are appropriate. And um, we teach you how to prepare readings and then you just follow the flow of spirit, really. Very right, totally right brain, the way this work is delivered, prepared and delivered. This is the main left brain bit, calculating the numbers. And that's, mm. the, short, that's the shortest bit. <laughs> so, so using that connection is the key to the whole thing. So this okay, is so like it's, a, basically, it's basically channeling the information through from spirit. Is that right? Yes, yeah, channeling it through, but in a very structured way, a very structured, mm. focused way. It's not a psychic reading. It's very structured. Mm -hmm. it's based upon the frequency of the client's um, birth name so so the way it works is that we when we train practitioners we spend the first three days transmitting to you it's experiential learning um, the meaning of the 22 numbers by using your the birth names of all the practice all the students in the class becoming practitioners and we we just go through all the numbers and they we try and have everyone share something about their life and the sharing of how each number we try and get all 22 numbers we managed to do it if there's enough people in the class they share their direct subjective experience of how that number played out and because you will feel 
emotionally, the transmission of what say an 11 2 is, you hear, you're like you heard it from Karen, you spend three days going through all the numbers. So then it's energetically imprinted in you permanently. So you learn by bodily transmission, which is the most powerful transmission. So it's not in the mind at all. We obviously talk for three days because the mind's paid 650 quid or whatever. And it wants to have, wants to see something, but energetically, most of it happens energetically the way the training works. So you start to become the work. You're not knowing it, you become it. Mm. The more you transmit and use it. And then we spend two days teaching you to hold space, connecting to your intuition, your channel. And people are amazed at what they can do because it just comes out of them because they started to, they've started to become the work in the first three days. And we teach people how to do channeled, structured channeled readings to each other. And we get some pretty amazing results. That's what we do in the last two days of the training. So you give and receive um, readings to each other. So that's the link between the left brain and the right brain. Okay, we have to keep the, the left brain occupied, but most of it's in the right brain and, and, and through the flow of spirit, really. That's what we're really doing with this. So it took us um, 27 years to figure that out, how to do it. We tried all sorts of different ways of training people. Does that clarify it? I mean, yes. I mean, obviously, this is really quite profound, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot one could discuss here. Um, yes, to some extent it does. I'm just sort of thinking about all the other sort of trainings that I have had, you know, with with shamans in different parts of the world who, who have obviously been channeling without anything like this, if you see what I mean. So that was my concern. Like, I mean, I was told when I was very young that I was, that was already a channeler and I was already a healer. Um, but I've sort of done it not in a not in what you would call like um, a monetary sense or a professional sense. I've always just sort of helped people along, and I still do it. But I'd, I've never ever done it for financial reasons. Well, this was designed. People come for this. They tend to have eleven twos. They want to help others find the structure of life and support them in it. And they have the five energy, which is not showing each is about the absolute truth of life and. The frequency of this work is, in, is about being pure truth and service. So it's about serving others to awaken them. That's how this works. And the financial thing is a secondary factor. Obviously, people are going to make a living, but people who are drawn to this want to serve. Mm -hmm. We don't get people coming who just want to use it to make a living. You might as well go and do something else. <laughs> so yeah, I can't imagine it's the easiest thing to do to actually make yeah. a living. Well, no, well, well, the power of it tends to... Um, once the truth of this gets out, word of mouth tends to build people's practices because it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. I built this practice in London in the in the late 90s purely by word of mouth because it wasn't the web the way we have now. There was no social media, just word of mouth it built because people had such profound experiences from it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eddie, Eddie, do you want to ask your question out loud so people can hear it? You have three of them here. See if we can unmute you. Hang on. Yo, you want me to ask my questions? Yeah, can you ask them out loud? Because it's, it's then it's more real. I can feel the energy of what you're asking me. Sorry, William. Okay. William, sorry. No, no problem. No problem. Yeah. The uh, first question was: Do the numbers have any sort of um, hierarchical status or priority no the numbers are the numbers we use in english that are just a, a label for a hebrew frequency like a 22 is no no better than the one they're all equal but they just have unique frequencies that come out of the movement of god or great spirit in the creation of the universe they have a unique quality so it's not mathematics in the sense that we're used to it's not western mathematics at all it's just a, just a way that we can understand it it's given we speak English, okay, and we're on Earth. But when you say like there's a, a range between eleven and two, well, is it just there's because a, there's there's a big uh, difference between eleven and two? No, no, no. Remember, this is just a label for Hebrew frequency. Okay, so it's not a just think of it as a vibration. It just happens to be the label for it. So this is a specific type of frequency of number, of energy, and so. 
It runs from one frequency to another, plus it's every blend in between like hot and cold taps in the shower. Between that particular, these particular unique frequencies. That's what that means. But just because there's a difference of nine mathematically, that's, that has no meaning in this case. Okay. Because in Hebrew, this is cuff, for example. Okay, they each have different Hebrew frequency names. That's what it's really about. Does that help? Yeah. Um, you, second question was, is it possible to change the name? Yes, it's called, we call it name optimization. So the name is, has someone's born, you're born with this birth name and this is hardwired into you. But you can, if you took a different name on like you do when you get married, but we do put, take it on consciously, we can design a name so that it basically burns through your karmic issues and helps you get to the goals and bring the talents online more easily. And depending on where you want to go in your life, we can program it to attract the right type of re new reality you want. It all depends what you want to do. You have a choice. And so, yeah, it's called name optimization. And, and each person has an optimal name that will really manifest their life. The soul already has it on board. Just, it's just a matter of in the process for the practitioner to discover what that is. Like I changed my name from Nicholas Guyanan, my birth the name to Nicholas David Nan in about 2006. And from then on, my life really changed because a new name was designed to attract all the right things to carry this mission out. Because my other name was all about hiding away and being a victim and not really, I wasn't getting very far. So you can change your entire reality by changing to the right name for the better. But that sounds kind of crazy to me. So does the name determine the karma or does the karma determine the name? No, no, the, the name determines the karma. Because the, the, the name here is basically a set of frequencies that we, we decode them this way like this. And these frequencies are vibrating out to the world, creating the reality. So then the karma is contained within the name. But didn't we choose the name, in a sense, when we embody? Yeah, the soul, at, the, at the soul level, we, we des our soul designed this name to have, uh, Karen's soul specifically designed this based on all her past life experience to have this unique experience she's going through. And that entire experience is, is embodied in that name. And she telepathed to her parents what she wanted to be called. And then as soon as, and when they, 97, 97, 98% of the time, the parents get it right. Child gets that name, that frequency is in them from the time they conceived it already. Just the parents have to catch up. That is creating the reality. Is, is that why people who have like, same names as me kind of have similar paths that's correct because the same frequencies won't be exactly the same because of astrology and life experience and what's in your dna what's in past right. lives but generally it'll be the same sort of experience because it's the same frequencies that you're radi radiating out the same frequency to the matrix so all the john smiths in the world will have similar experiences if that was their birth name yeah, yeah. Like I see, I see the people who have my name, and it's like that could have been a path I could have chosen. Like yeah, when I was why. going through college, it was like one of the things I was considering. Yeah, it's because it, it's the same frequency. See, well, the matrix is going to give you the same stuff. Interesting. Okay, and then my last question was: Is it possible to finish the destiny and get a new contract? Um, if you consciously, if you know what your soul contract is and you consciously work through all these six outer aspects, you use very powerful healing tools. We use a thing called divine healing, which our mirror, Ariel Hale, who developed this with me, we built upon the original work Frank taught me, and expanded over 20 odd years. Um, yes, if you have a powerful enough healing tool and you're prepared to turn into the issues rather than run away from it, which is what the ego wants because it's pain averse, then you may manifest this entire contract. Okay, you may get to this full soul destiny, full manifestation of soul destiny. It is possible, but you don't get a new contract. Basically, you, but you can get spiritual upgrades if you get through a lot of this. Uh, other higher frequency components of your higher self may come in to take advantage of that and build upon the life. Okay, they may just like you get a promotion. Okay, okay, you did well there. Here's another low. Let's go. Let's go to a level beyond what was originally planned because you managed to get through all the stuff. 
it's like a big game, really. You just got to get through all the levels. Except we didn't realize that when we got born. Is that what people say when they say, like, ascension? You get to your next level? Well, ascension is about, about burning through all the stuff here to raise the frequency of the body by clearing all the negative low frequency emotions from this contract learning the soul just wants to have the visceral experience of moving from one polarity to another through all these aspects the body frequency rises and then you start ascending in consciousness as a result of that whole process and eventually um, we're becoming lighter and lighter eventually with ascension we will um, turn to beings of light will no longer be a dense physical body will just be maybe the same shape but much lighter okay tend to then eventually we merge with higher consciousness we be we get lighter and lighter because there are many dimensional levels of experience for life but you just don't have the same dense physical body you have now and the idea is to go through that process conscious and remember what it was like to be in these 3d bodies and to go from being this separate from God to being connected to God again, more, more progressively. That's what ascension is. Because we were all initially at God, and it, it had an outbreath, expanded, and parts of us, parts of it, our souls forgot who we were. And then we awake, awaken, and we and we clear our egos, we clear all this programming, we start to realize, oh, we're connected to higher consciousness. And the, the, the in-breath is happening now going back to source. It's a gradual process of a very long period of time. And the creator, God, great spirit, learns from each of us because we are part of it. We are the creator creating through each moment of our lives and through the, the strong emotional experience we have, which is why our souls come. I know some of you may want to day off occasionally, but that experience is how the creator grows through feeling experience. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Just a quick question. Um, um, just a quick question. I mean, where does the role of like uh, free will come into this? I mean, if people aren't actually aware, they haven't sort of woken up at any particular point, um, does this mean that the life will still continue along that path? Until at some point, whether it's via this process or something else, they they have an event or a crisis or something, which enables them to actually change their destiny, or do they still have to go through this whole process? This is this is potential, which is laid out from the time you're born. The soul is like the soul sets this thing in motion, it has to step back, and then has to try. And then you, we, as brand new personality expressions, have free will choice. To do whatever we like with it we can run away from it we can engage with it but that's the grand experiment in consciousness here on earth and the soul doesn't know what will happen because if it did it wouldn't do it it doesn't know how we're going to turn out so it's up to us we're in charge us we at personality level eddie and nicholas and william and karen and ashley and kira we're all in charge it's up to us what we do with it but when you know what the general direction of the soul is the more you align with it and work through these issues when you know what this is through, through free will choice, but the more we align with it, what eventually happens is that we align with the pure flow of spirit. What is the next right action in each, in each moment, which is gonna actually allow us to manifest this whole contract to, and really deliver our gift of service. So you have a choice to follow spirit or not, basically, and neither is right or wrong, it's, it's just a choice. But this gives an indication of what sort of choices will actually work? Because you align with the flow of this, life opens and closes. You don't, life gets a lot harder as you've seen with a lot of people because they don't know what this is. So they're usually doing things which are going sideways, diametrically opposed. So therefore, it's not working because they're usually avoiding the pain in their physical karma and spiritual karma. Whereas the job is actually turned into it and resolve it. The very last place most people want to go. Because then the gift comes out, this life gets easier because this low frequency programming is out of the body and life opens up in a completely different way. Okay. 
Do you know, I'd, I'd, I'd unmuted myself. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to absorb, actually, sort of mentally. I mean, I get it emotionally. I get it sort of viscerally. It's just getting the mind and the body to, to work together at the same time, which is yeah. a little more complex. Yeah, well, this is a, a pathway to a pathway to a lot more, a lot more fulfilling life. That's what this is about. So it's a choice to live in joy or in pain, pretty much. So have you found that most people who do come to you for as a client or you know practitioner to do a reading, do you actually find that most of them do actually do something about it? Like you were sort of saying to oh, Karen yeah. about you oh, know, yeah, removing because, the imprint. Oh, yeah, because um, now they know what's really going on. No one wants to stay in pain and they realise what's causing it. Most people can't do something about it because they've had enough. By the time they get to having a reading, they've really had enough. Mm. But who would choose more pain over more bliss or fulfilment? It may take time. It's challenging for most people, but at least they know they're doing the right thing. Because previously they were spending probably 20, uh, uh, most people don't, they spend their energy in all sorts of areas which don't aren't going to work because it's not in alignment. But with this process, you can spend 80% of the energy on the 20% of key things that matter. And that's when you get change in life because you actually know what the map is. It's like driving around mm. a night in a car with no headlamps on or no sat nav. Turn the lights on, turn the sat nav on, guide it towards your soul destiny. Then it's going to get really interesting because good stuff is going to start to happen. It'll be challenging, but at least you know you're doing the right thing. Because most people have no idea what's going to work. That's pretty random based on the ego. Yeah, the ego is really, really powerful. And it's it's ironic, isn't it? Because the, the ego in the brain is supposed to be, you know, taking care of us and our survival but it sort of leaves us in a very dark place a lot of the time well 50 percent of the time it gets it wrong so the odds aren't great if you just use that you know it's fluff of a coin whether you're going to get life right mm. and with this here you know you know what's going to work and what's not going to work and the purpose of the work is show people where they are on this chart and what's the next step to follow the flow of spirit what's going to work and you do so, one it's to work, then you do another, then gradually life unfolds. So clients can actually sort of get a strategy as to how to get themselves out of safe, like the conditioning, the imprint, the ancestral stuff, or whatever, oh, yeah, in order you, to change that. Yeah, we teach you how to give very specific, first figure out through the diet. It's like a, it's a conversation. You're having a structured conversation with a client. Find out where are they on the map, how far they progress, because you're not, not going to know until you talk to them. And then how to bring to bear very specific recommendations which we have for breaking free of those particular issues. So they leave with a structured program to actually move forward, which is the whole point of it. There's no point just understanding what's there. No. Okay, okay, it's not looking so good on some areas, but here's what we can do that will move you forward. And that's the really important bit with us. What is the next step? Because a lot of people get stuck because they don't know what's going on, let alone what to do about it. Yeah, I think that that's the important thing, isn't it? It's what action that people can, yeah, can actually yeah. take, which is the right thing that will get them back into alignment so they've actually got the whole thing working together, you know, mind, body, spirit, dimensionally, everything yeah. else. Because I think everybody's sort of got a little bit here, maybe a little bit there. That's why it's been so fragmented with people looking for so many different channels of sort of aspects of spirituality. It all comes to naught because they don't have like a blueprint to be able to follow through on it. That's right. But this is the map that takes you through and the, the soul moves around the different aspects depending on on the year or the, or the day, month or year. But some things will run for a few weeks or months or years. Then it switches to something else because it feels like, okay, we've made enough progress here. Let's go and do something else. But it's time to evolve another part of the chart. So it gives the map for long-term progress in terms of awakening and delivering the gift of service for a light worker. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right and people come back to it a lot because they they know it's true and if you're a therapist it's very useful because you've got a common ground of truth um you got a very you've got a common ground of truth which everyone's accepted so therefore you can get on with it okay uh, let me just think yeah so i'll talk more about that here so as a therapist, counselor, coach, consultant, or workshop facilitator, it gives an immediate understanding of students' or clients' lives. 
which can accurately guide you through all the work with them, it builds trust with them because they know it's true, you know it's true. So it cuts through all the games the ego plays. Okay. And so they get faster results. Everyone gets moves through it quicker, the issues. And um, the training helps you understand these people and yourself. Um, and I think I already said it, you just, you'll learn how to do these readings and to develop your channel. We already covered all that. And this is the bodily transmission I talked about and it reawakens the DNA. So it reawakens the, the knowledge of how this works. Okay. Through complete immersion for five days. Um, and we have ongoing support for students or practitioners. We have a Facebook support group and a Zoom support program um, to help people get out there in the world with it because it's such a powerful tool. And people, clients will usually get a feeling of deep peace when they hear the truth of their lives. So profoundly read. There's a relief to know actually there's an order to this thing. I used to feel my life was a big train wreck and then I realized there was an order to it and Frank gave me my reading. And this is the bit we talked about. People may feel like victims or they're stuck. They can take charge and move forward with the right steps. So you're showing them the map, you're giving them recommendations to overcome the challenges. Then people start to feel, I can maybe manifest those dreams I've had. I've actually started to overcome these challenges, whereas these seem insurmountable earlier. And it's about aligning people to their solo life purpose and retouching them, their inner being, with the power of the truth of this, which creates a lot of trust and depth in the work. And it also brooks, brings a lot of compassion for you as a, as a reader of the work, self-contract reader, because you see the truth of what's going on as you connect to these people. And it's, and it's about having compassion for people. It really helps with that. So the training is designed to help you do all that. Um, so you yeah, prepare and give readings, and the aim is to, so you can deliver readings soon after the workshop. And it requires a bit of study and practice, but most people are doing pretty well in terms of being able to deliver, deliver readings um, and making a difference in the world, which is why we, they come, why we train them. Okay. Any other questions, people? How many people have you trained as practitioners and how many people are actually still sort of practicing as... That's probably, probably um, I don't know, three or four hundred of them. No, I'm not sure how many. 250, 300, maybe 400. And are they from different parts of the world? Or, I mean, is your training? Um, all over the world, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, teach the, we teach the Zoom workshop globally. We teach um, the Western Hemisphere training, which is designed to go from California out to Eastern Europe. And we're now teaching for the first time in Asia Pacific training, which will go from the Middle East out to New Zealand. So that'll be at a different time. So this and training. Can practitioners eventually sort of um, train other practitioners or does it only via your process here? Um, we, we do have a teacher training program. You need to have done a lot of readings before you can be considered for that. So yeah, and I have other practitioners that learn to be teachers in our teaching. So yeah. Okay. Um, so the Western Hemisphere training runs um, over two weekends, 25 to 27 March and 2nd to 3rd of April, 2022. This is the Californian mums asking me, can you split it over two weekends because we have to get up at 4.30. But it's better than flying, which is very difficult to do at the moment. But I can only teach to 8.30 at night, which is why we do that. So 12.30 to 8.30 UK, 7.30 AM start in Eastern, etc. 4.30 in Pacific, 1.30 start in Europe. So that's the Western Hemisphere training. The um, Asia Pacific training starts at 6 AM UK to 2 PM. And it's designed for Australia and New Zealand. So it's 5 PM start in Sydney to one in the morning. It's about 7, 7 PM in New Zealand to 3 AM, but it's better than being up all night. So that's the other way we do it. Um, so if, if you guys are interested, it's 
652 UK pounds, about 850 US. Deposit to secure place is 250 UK pounds, about 325 US. Um, and there's more information at subcontractreadingtraining.com. But this is sort of like a sacred mission, really. People are really either drawn or they're not drawn to come. And this is just about coming if it really feels right to you. Um, so everyone who comes is usually very dedicated or very dedicated to make a difference in the world. So it's really, in, there's some really interesting people turn up and it's global. Um, you have a whole range of people turn up. Um, so it's very interesting culturally. Uh, you have people from Malaysia and India and South Africa and Australia, New Zealand, um, the Eastern Bloc, they're all from all over the place. They turn up for this. So. William? Is this only once a year? Um, it runs in, in spring and we run another one in October, in autumn. Okay. And for those who, Australasians watching, there's one on the 10th to the 14th of March. Okay. Of 2022. That's the, that's the Asia Pacific one, if you're interested. Okay. So it runs 5 a.m., 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. That's in New South Wales to 1 a.m. Because enough Australians asked me, so we decided to try that, see what happens. So yeah, there's there's two, there's basically two a year, and the, and, and it's much is time friendly for you, William. So okay. Just a quick question, um, because I don't know which part of the world I'm going to be in <laughs> in March or April, because I was intending to go back to South Africa, South America last year, but because of COVID, I didn't. And um, I'm still intending to go to Colombia in March. So well, it's, I'm Eastern, sort of... it's Eastern time in, so it's 7.30 in the morning. Okay. You. This will be the one to do for you because the Australasian one is, um, the timing is not going to work for you. You'll be starting about 10 o'clock at night in Colombia. So that won't work too well. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's going to manifest itself or not. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to be there. Um, to go and yeah, work well, with some indigenous populations, but I'm not absolutely certain it will happen. Yeah. Well, if you're still in the UK, are you in the UK at the moment, Eddie? I'm in the UK at the moment. Yeah, well, it's 12 30, it's midday to 8 30. So it's pretty civilized hours, really. Okay. Yeah. That's the best way can we can accommodate as many people as possible. So, so for more information, I, I go to soulcontractreadingtraining.com and yeah. more information. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, email me if you have a, once you read that, Email me if you've got a specific question. You got mm. my. What's email, your email, please, please Nicholas? Um, it's 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 on it, it's on the um. It's on there. Joining joining instructions. It's, it's on the emails you got from. Um, okay, great. Zoom. Thank you. On there. Great. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, anybody? Oh, and just briefly, what's the name of your book? Because I didn't pick it up after that summit that Helene yeah, did. I didn't get around your to it. soul contract decoded. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. On Amazon, so okay, all right, yeah, let's make sure there's no other questions. I think we're okay. All right, no other questions. Thanks everybody for participating. Thanks, Karen, for stepping up to do the demo. We'll have this out to you probably early next week. The video, and thanks for participating and great engagement. Really appreciate it. Okay, take care, everybody.